All right. My dear fellow listeners, good evening once again and welcome to another edition of Let's Chit Chat with Narayandad. Let's Chit Chat with Narayandad is a Canadian initiative with a global impact. There are a few different ways to listen to us. You can listen to us on a regular dial, that's the radio, 102.7 CKMS FM. You can listen to us on Rogers Digital Cable for those of you who have the Rogers Digital Box. And of course, we are live streaming or chit chat. So do take the opportunity to share our page. Tonight is extremely special because I was able to get a hold of one of Canada's top 25 Canadian immigrants who I'm very much happy to get to know over the years. And he, uh, he's no other than uh, Sukjit Singh. He joined us because he's going to take the opportunity to share um, not only his talent, um, but his strengths, his barriers and all of that uh, with us tonight. So that way you and I, we can get some tips as to how we can be successful individuals, especially for those of you who are living out of Canada and are probably planning to move and migrate to Canada. So this is an extremely important chit chat. So do take the opportunity to share a page. So um, Sukjit, thank you so much for joining us here on Let's Chit Chat with Narayan. How are you doing tonight? No, your, 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 your thing is off there. Your, yeah. Sure, sorry. Yeah, no problem. I know. You know what? I paused myself, but thank you so much. I was enjoying the slides before the show and all these years I know you and, uh, you know, and, and I'm, I'm actually very excited today to be, uh, to be on your show. And uh, yeah, and technically this is my first time Facebook Live. I have never done Facebook Live. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. I'm actually very excited and looking forward to our, our chit chat. Absolutely, absolutely. And of course, we have chosen it for a reason. I mean, both of us met, you know, um, during when both of you and I, uh, you know, obviously were named Canada Stop, uh, you know, 25 um, Canadian immigrant in the same year, which obviously was a very special time for yourself, for me and so on. But we'll focus on you tonight. Um, you know, um, so we want to kind of uh, take every opportunity so you can give us some tips, you know, because different things work for different people. But you and I know that there are things we can do to um, to make sure things work for us so that we make the best out of our, um, you know, new transition, you know, coming from different parts of the world and make Canada our home. So this will be a really good chit chat. So before we get into all the bits and pieces in terms of question and how you did it and all of that. Why not take a minute or so and introduce yourself so that people know that when you came to Canada, you, know, you came with some solid background as well, too. Oh, so yes. oh yes. <laughs> you know, this question, this question is very interesting itself. You know what? Uh, by profession, now I'm a career strategist. So when when I when I meet with individual and especially newcomers, you know, this is a this is a very typical question. You know, tell me about yourself. But today on your show, I'm going to tell everything about myself. And I'm I may take a bit longer than average interview question. Um, I will start with my profession. I started my profession as a system analyst. That was my first job and it was not in Canada. Mm -hmm. I was born, raised in India and uh, I finished my diploma and uh, very soon uh, I got my first job and my title was system analyst. Mm -hmm. For roughly two years, I was uh, working as a system analyst in one of the oldest electrical manufacturing company in, in the northern province of India, Punjab. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I'm very proud of, of my, my, my first job with, with, with that particular uh, brand because uh, number one, it was my first job. Number two, I was working with one of the oldest computer system in India. Oh, wow. Then, you know what, I was very young. I, I decided uh, to move on to a new profession and I became a computer in instructor. So almost for a year and a half, I was uh, working in India as a computer instructor. And then I got an opportunity to work in Oman. It's a beautiful uh, country, beautiful coastal country next to, like it is below Dubai if you look at the map. Mm -hmm. And uh, there I, I went there for a job which was offered by a campus. Uh, this was an affiliated campus with Glasgow Caledonian University. And uh, I initially thought I'll spend some time, but I ended up being there uh, for nine years. And uh, then I moved to Canada in 2009. And again, coming to Canada, once again, there was an opportunity for me to to embrace change and big actually change happened in Canada 
and when we go uh, when we move ahead with other questions and uh, in canada after six months of struggle six months of learning and unlearning i ended up in being non-profit it was by choice i wanted to work in non-profit because i myself was facing all those challenges and i was learning a lot and i wanted to share that learning and i i chose non-profit and i became a frontline worker and today i'm very proud that i work with the with the organization it is center for education and training i was once client of that wonderful organization and i'm very proud of my work uh, my colleagues there and in all these years wherever i have worked i gained a lot of experience i gained so much that i from the day one i i went to job either my volunteer work or my regular job i decided that beyond my 9 to 5 job i will give back to the community as a volunteer so yeah so that's that's a little bit uh, of introduction now i have a uh, two certifications which i am very proud of i am a mm-hmm. certified career strategist i am a proud member of career professionals of canada and i know uh, naran you also have finished uh, your <laughs> proud graduate from conestoga <laughs> college also that's right that's right yes right? yes and uh, i am also a certified community resource specialist which is through inform canada i am also proud member and i sat on the board also for some time so this is brief i live in mississauga um i i always worked in in peel within peel region uh, and it's my uh 10th almost 10th year, 10th year in canada as an immigrant now i'm a proud citizen settled canadian and i'm doing my uh, canadian way of living plus mm-hmm. uh following the core canadian value i'm a i'm a big volunteer big time volunteer yeah. so mm-hmm. this is my uh, longest introduction narand no and i'm glad you took the time to kind of uh introduce yourself well you know because we want people to know obviously who you are um you mentioned something very interesting and i'm aware of your organization by the way they had offered me a position as well too so i um, oh. um they have i'm not sure if this will have it but this will be nice for you to touch on it at least with a yes or no answer because um it is very uh, it's a very unique program so they used to have a program where um you don't necessarily have to be in canada to access the 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 service you 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 technically it is for people who are out of the country but they are in the process to 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 land in canada um, but they have to get their residency or will be getting the residency when they land i'm not sure what they call it but some new newcomer something uh, do they still it's, have that program it's pre arrival program yes, and yes, mm-hmm. yes uh, sadly that program is uh, it's been run by other organizations but uh, not with our organization but yes still in in a way we do serve those who are yet to come to canada so you still do that somewhat as well too yes, yes okay i just thought i i i asked quickly um you know i didn't mean to get into that but i know that people are watching who are out of you know canada as well too and so i really if people can connect themselves with those kinds of program at least they'll have a good sense um you know with a lot of important pieces you know um things that they are going to need you know um yep. you know know what i'm talking about to kind of really get their feet yes, yes. wet and kind of get going kind of thing so anyway so thank you for that no so obviously we have lots to talk about you have achieved a lot within a short um, period of time you are very much passionate about um you know community work and you know that's this, those are the kind of things that fits with my value like we, yes. we that's, that's what we do best actually <laughs> the thing right it's who we are but what was your first impression when you came to canada you know millions of people would love to come to a country like canada um i mean you had a good job good career um, prior to you came to canada here in some cases many people are not in your um, in those kinds of position they just want to get out of war situation poverty yeah. whatever yeah. um you know so let's not get into all of that but when you you know uh, first see canada and you land in canada and you realize that you know what you're going to make canada your home what was your first impression when you start to navigate and and kind of you know um discovering canada really with in terms of opportunities you know what uh, your question is my first impression but i have to give you a little bit of background of course, because of the course. impression especially i did mention about my country of origin i'm very proud indian mm-hmm. um i'm i'm from the northern part which is which is punjab uh, it's a very rich state and uh um you know the impression in in majority of my state uh, you start building up 
the moment you are born there because either in your neighborhood or your village or your city or somebody in your either friend circle or family circle is outside of india mm-hmm. either canada uk england australia new zealand and and you know different countries now people are all over the world uh, so when when i was growing up uh, from our family there was nobody who actually lived worked outside of india though my my uncle my father's eldest brother he traveled outside my aunt she traveled outside but nobody was living right but every now and then my dad will bring a friend or somebody in our neighborhood will come and they will you know they were different the way they dressed the way they spoke and the most important thing is the way they said the things are done differently in those countries so you know and sometimes you also get a gift right mm-hmm. so so that infatuation about what is that magic land why those lands are different right so that is ingrained in the beginning right so when when i i was growing up i finished my my education there was a plan to go somewhere so that i can also enjoy that uh, differentness like whatever is different right um so i applied for a student visa uh, to canada but i did not succeed right so but then you know i moved to oman but when i was preparing for canada there were certain things a uh, few things i knew that there is a large indian diaspora mm-hmm. and i i never knew whether i'm going to toronto or vancouver but mm-hmm. on back of mind we knew i knew that there are there is lot of indian population and if you again uh sub categorize this mm-hmm. there was a lot of punjabi population right so i right. from 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 my connections from my my parents or my extended family members connection somehow this uh what do you say this idea of okay in terms of your your eating and all that stuff it won't be that different you will get everything mm-hmm. but yes in terms of your profession it will be a lot different right but in that impression when i applied to move to canada and now this story will entice with what you were mentioning before okay. i when i knew that i am coming to canada with my family i decided to join that pre arrival program and i was very fortunate that uh, just a month before uh, my my migration from from my home country to canada was happening i was fortunate to attend that two day program i attended the full two day program more than like 16 hours of that program giving uh, they give you orientation and all that stuff so then you know what you try to process that information because there is one information which uh, your your ethnic newspaper will give in india that uh, and you see the pictures of prominent in- indian businessmen prominent indian politicians and all but then when you get to know the other information that how your life as an immigrant would be mm-hmm. uh, it's not very encouraging to know everything because you also now tend to google right <laughs> and honestly my my research was giving me this indication that either you will make it or you will come back so believe it or not when we decided to come to canada we bought a two way a return ticket with us mm-hmm. that if nothing works out we will go back that was the thing right but mm-hmm. in terms of impression i also knew that if canada is known as land of opportunities there must be something for me also mm-hmm. right but I, now it is after landing to landing uh, in canada right first impression definitely very warm people very different right and i'm talking about 10 years ago That's now right. but to me it is it is as fresh as it happened yesterday awesome good and when i came i was really touched by the gesture of like the kindness the smile and and you know what nobody was rushing nobody everybody was easy. and i'm talking about my uh can i continue i think naran is away but i will continue with my story so uh uh what i was saying is Oh, I'm glad you're back. I hope everything is fine, Naran. Oh yes, everything is fine. I just went to turn on some lights on there. <laughs> okay. So I was saying I, I, Okay, go ahead. <laughs> the the first impression about Canada and Canadians, uh, the mark in our heart was made right at the airport. 
and especially uh, i always mention i never left this example of kindness and generosity of canadians when a porter whom we hired to help us with our luggage so that was my first impression about canada and you know what you don't want to i don't want to talk about further because i know in your following questions you may somewhere ask me about my other other part of my journey but my first impression was really heartwarming really welcoming and really smiling people right mm-hmm. i i i come from india but i have spent a lot of time in oman almost 9 years my mm-hmm. expectation you know you come living in certain culture but when you see a different culture definitely and it was all positive in the beginning well thank you for sharing that of course i mean um i mean you are you are a positive person so you you always find a way to put a, a positive spin to to everything which is a good thing i mean i've never heard you say you know um you know any too much or anything negative at, at least i have heard you know so i'm glad that you actually were, well you were able to see positive um, pieces you were able to kind of see bright future kind of thing you know from the time you land here in canada and i mean and it worked well for you i mean you i know you are in nonprofit and so on now but it fits with your values because you are a people person of course um i i remember i think you've mentioned sometime in a speech or, or 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 some seminar or something you mentioned that you never you're never out of resources you always carry resources when it comes to helping people always. So you always have them in your car so if you meet somebody and 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 they need any sort of resources to kind of really get by whether that be you know information for you know whether you know a- anything job or whatever. Whatever. whatever you have it with you and so so that's a good way to because that's a beautiful thing because when you mention about that i thought to myself what a great idea because i used to work for a company called or or an organization called opportunities water region so we used to do a lot of mobile stuff so we don't necessarily allow client to come to us we go to the client so we make it easy because we realize you know we are breaking we are you know bridge some gap here so if the client can't come to us then we are going to go to them so a lot of mobile in right? so we'll travel and, and whatever issue they have we'll work it out so when you when you mention that i said you know he is on point here because you know because if somebody meet with you and say no i realize you have went through this process do you have any information for me and then if you say oh well send me an email here's my business card you would know that's not going to go too far because i know <laughs> i, I have like so it. many business card you're not going to believe in that so the fact that you 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 think that way is a beautiful thing because that way if people are talking about settlement you can give them brochure and say here here you go here is you know something for you and at least you know it's a little bit more better that way kind of things awesome so and can i can, I, can yeah. i add something to it i of tell course. you one thing that was my beginning that was my beginning mm-hmm. and you know what i'm a curious person we all are human being is a curious person mm-hmm. but my curiosity was at a different level and it is still date it is at a different level mm-hmm. because i want to know i want to know everything because i know if not me someone else knows something this is where i say we don't know everything we right. know something and i all, i love to share what i know so in 10 years i can tell you narayan uh, i i have developed this expertise except few sectors except few things i think in general if you are ever looking for resources for a b c i i'm ready i don't need to even refer to a website i'm ready right and now after 10 years being a non profit one year i even served a political office also a mpp's office that was a turning point in my life when i learned more about the community resources mm-hmm. now any level of government and if you are reaching out to resources at least with god's grace i know that how things works in canada also and uh-huh. believe it or not it did not only help me but it helped those who were in need of help and i'm very proud of that and again it's not me but again those wonderful individuals who mm-hmm. came to my life still coming like yourself mm-hmm. i still remember our one one uh, quick meeting when mm-hmm. i was visiting african lion safari if you remember and that's in, right yes. summers, we right, really right. bumped into each other so, that's right any time i don't let it go waste mm-hmm. i know that i can assist the community i can help the community and what i don't know i do know who knows it so Correct. that's kind of i count my blessing that you know what uh, and again i i i will say this word again during all this is when 
I when we when we hear this word land of opportunity, it's really a magical land. And I know we are going through tough time, COVID nineteen, and and certain other challenges which community is facing right now. But but I say, you know, these opportunities and what resources I'm talking about are very helpful. I'm I'm very blessed to know a little bit, and I'm still learning more. You know, um, you brought up a, a very good point there. You know, um, I mean, of course, I mean, there's a reason why I brought you on the show in the first place. But I, I'm aware that you have lots of knowledge when it comes to, um, you know, um, how community operates, how things, you know, how to navigate, you, you know, um, through to kind of, you know, get things done and so on, all the basic stuff that people are probably struggling, you know, to kind of really um, get the grabs on and so on. So I'm aware of that. And I'm, but I'm also very proud that you're actually taking the time, the privilege really to kind of really, you are not afraid to help people. No. You know, you, you do it with sort of a pride. And that's one of the reasons, you know, it came of no surprise when you were named one of Canada's top 25 Canadian immigrants within a short um, time, you know, when you think about it that way. And so you were able to find yourself, you were able to, um, you know, um, see the positive pieces kind of thing because it could go the other way as well too you know because if people are not able to navigate or if they're not able to see you know the light at the end of the tunnel and things of that kind if they're afraid to ask for help things like that they can get stuck to you i'm pretty much yes. sure you will agree, you'll agree yes, with very right? Yeah, right but if um they're they're open the difference with you i think is that you know you, um, you, you're open you i'm always willing to learn you keep learning you never stop learning i mean you've grown so much even from the time when we first or, or previously met to now, like you have grown so much, which is Thank awesome. You. And I mean, um, a lot of people, um, you know, um, of course, um, you know, um, have and, and will continue to benefit from you um, based um, on the resources. My light just gone there. I want to try to fix there. Oh my God. <laughs> but it's gone, gone. No, that's okay. We're you gone. still look handsome, Ryan. Don't worry. You have, <laughs> enough, you have enough glow on your face. So you're shining. <laughs> you know, um, they, it goes to show that everything um, comes to an end, um, um, you know, so that is fine. So I know what to do next now. Yeah, so I mean, you actually, you you are in the right field is what I'm trying to say, yes. you know, because yes. you work with a lot of immigrants, you work with a lot of newcomers, and, you know, people always need these kinds of services. The sad piece usually, though, is that when people find out like two, three years after, you know, that, you know what? there were services available for them yes. to, kind, to kind of make life a little bit easier, but they don't find out or they didn't find out, you know, right from the beginning. So yeah. the fact that we have active people like yourself really makes a huge difference for sure. So you, you keep that going. Um, but I will have to ask you though, because I've spoken, as you know, I work with a lot of immigrants myself too in our area here. Mm -hmm. um, what are some of the challenges um, that um, you, you have seen or you have encountered yourself, um, mm -hmm. you know, as a person coming to Canada here, whether that be race, whether that be, I mean, I don't see you navigating stuff being a challenge because it looks like that's what you do best. But were there challenges, you know, uh, prior or are you seeing challenges for you to kind I, of I tell you, I tell you one thing, and thanks for asking. This mm -hmm. itself is a challenge, challenging mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. And I tell you one thing, I have done a lot of interviews and all. And today, mm -hmm. and there also I spoke my heart. Mm -hmm. And today also, but I will add a little bit more. Absolutely. Before I talk about challenges, mm -hmm. I will talk about what I faced mm -hmm. initially in Canada. Absolutely. And we want to hear it. We want to hear it. Yes. <laughs> The fear of unknown. Mm -hmm. I never traveled to Canada before actually migrating to Canada. Mm -hmm. My daughter was not even two years old. Like she was 18 months and a few days old. Uh, mm -hmm. My wife, I mean, she's a school teacher now. But when, when we came, I had no job. She had no job. We have few contacts. Mm -hmm. The fear of unknown. Mm -hmm. That was like, and you know what? There is another cultural thing I will say, Narayan, and I'm not hesitant to share that. Mm -hmm. A South Asian having a very good job, migrating to Canada. So the society's expectation, your family, your friend's expectation, it's a, it's different. But what you do go through as an individual, male or female or any other gender, you only know that. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I had a big fear. I knew that I have some saving. I knew how to 
how to survive in that mode but there was a fear that what will happen to my life will i be ever able to even survive forget about awards and recognition that can come later but your existence is in question when you move and this is not only moving to canada if you move from even your in your own country you come from from one province to another province a lot of challenges mm-hmm. but here is a challenge which is so much of like double or triple or four times more is you don't know what future holds mm-hmm. you don't know and everything is unknown and on top of that on the lighter side of life after few days i got my first real fear my fear was to take a transit <laughs> and the fear came though i i i had a okay i can say english is not first language mm-hmm. hindi punjabi is where i was born right I then i worked there i i got to use english and i barely you know can tell you that like you know what i was okay with english mm-hmm. but you know what when it is really unknown fear like how do i talk what do i need to do Uh, and you know no matter what preparation you make but ground reality when you actually go to the station or when you go to the bus stop and then you know what that fear till date and i did mention in my book mm-hmm. fear fear is fear big or small so that is that is you know what that is my first fear but then once you overcome one fear another fear will come mm-hmm. my second biggest fear was like i was so afraid with this turban and beard i know south asian population it's like we are very diverse here here especially in gt of course of course but but, but people were telling me uh, like you will face challenges and all this and that in my journey at one point i also got some kind of messaging in terms of one particular email somebody was suggesting with the turban and beard i i may not even survive i am, i need to shave off my my beard you know what all these things were adding to my anxiety mm-hmm. all these things were actually making me more fearful but you know what god has created human being in a very smart very intelligent way fear come and there will be somebody either a book or an individual or somebody in your family who will come as you to save you from that fear and then you move on That's so right. and thank god you know i always have support from especially from my wife and now my my daughter she's 12 now and also my extended family in india my in-laws my my uncles my aunts like whoever so i had that kind of confidence that you know what even if i drown somebody will pull me out <laughs> i don't know how it it looked like but <laughs> as soon as i realized you know and then comes the regular immigrant challenges mm-hmm. your resume your interview your appearance everything and i'm that's what i mentioned in the beginning when i decided my way of job hunt was not working i better learn mm-hmm. i better learn plus unlearn certain things so if my learning was this much my unlearning was that much based on the canadian uh, job market uh, in terms of the context in the canadian job market right That's but right. i'm so glad i finished that 3 week program and that too i finished at the center for education and training where i got first hand information that what is not acceptable in canada in terms of when you're looking for job mm-hmm. and then you know as soon as i realized my mistakes i will call mistakes because canadian standard and my standard they were not matching in terms of my job search mm-hmm. as soon as i learned the trick in beginning it looks like a trick that oh instead of seven pages you put two pages instead That's of right. doing this you do this instead of knocking the door and asking can i get a job instead say good morning how are you doing right put here there like a lot of things like i'm just giving you a very basic course, example yeah, but yeah. it is a lot different mm-hmm. now i'm more confident in in reaching out to any stranger but 10 years ago i was like a child who started learning how to walk how to talk and all that stuff then one most important thing which i learned and this is where i always give this advice to anyone irrespective of either they are immigrant or refugees mm-hmm. or people on work permit or students mm-hmm. you need to follow certain individuals who made big mark in canada correct because we all have some wisdom to share 
and from one of those individuals i got one key point and i start i decided to try it out and that one uh, thing was try out volunteering mm -hmm. and i said you know what if out of all those success secret nothing else at least let me try this and through a wonderful organization which i'm very proud to mention here also volunteer mbc it's it's a peel based organization through them i got my first opportunity to teach basics of computer right mm -hmm. so that was my turning point mm -hmm. because earlier my confidence level was going down mm -hmm. no job and you know people telling you stories after stories that uh, it is better for you to buy uh, shoes uh, factory shoes hard toed shoes i did buy but i never wore those <laughs> my destiny took me somewhere else where mm -hmm. i ended up in uh, in volunteering and volunteerism my life completely changed the confidence i got from my volunteer work in 6 months i landed in september late september and my first job started uh, in april i believe so march or april in 2010 six months it took me to learn unlearn and start contributing and imagine without a job i started contributing but biggest contribution in my my success till date is my volunteer work then it was learning now it is sharing That's it right. has expanded i just wanted to explore why people say things are done differently in canada canadians are different then i realized it is different because i am new i need to learn certain things not to change myself but to either behave or talk i tend to speak very fast when i use my third language which is english mm -hmm. i tend to speak very fast i slowed down i toned it mm -hmm. my pitch you know thanks to my dna my father is do engineer but he is a singer also oh. so my pitch is very high i am loud right and mm -hmm. and i am lot of time lot of time i still know that you know uh, uh sometime i come strong like come across very strong right mm -hmm. so it's not that i changed but i learned that people whom you are meeting for the first time may not know you right that's correct so all this and my volunteer work made a strong base my foundation was actually built by volunteerism and i started building i i changed jobs i i was i my contract was over i got new contract my job was changed one thing i never left was to be a volunteer and i tell you one thing what a blessing it is for me not only not only that i got my confidence back i was in position to help others and now at this stage uh, because when you were saying you know what now it comes so natural now mm -hmm. because now it is 10 years you have already spent in the industry knowing knowing the job market not only that but the society as a whole so i always right. say not only not only job i'm blessed that i work in the same sector where it is help right mm -hmm. but then my after my job hours my whole time is dedicated to help people no matter what from where they are what is their status if somebody reaches out to me definitely i am always open to help so okay. that's that's what i wanted to share the challenges yes identity is always a challenge it will stay it is there today but again when you are new you don't have multiple things but now with time you know how to handle i mentioned about a racist email which was sent to me mm -hmm. i did not know how to respond then mm -hmm. but today if i get any comment and all i do know my rights but then when you are new you don't know <laughs> and right. you know what uh there is a cultural aspects of this i am mm -hmm. from a fighter clan like you know six are known right mm -hmm. uh, for for not the first fight but you know uh, in terms of, of, course, of course, multiple yeah. other things sociology uh, like psychology and multiple other factors mm -hmm. but that email actually broke me down like how somebody can say this to someone whom you don't know mm -hmm. i did not share that email with my family with my wife especially because she she is and she was my companion but i was like so embarrassed to even share that email mm -hmm. but again thanks to that person who sent me that email because that tells me there are two type 
two types of people in your life those who lift uplifts you and those who will never believe in you who will never say anything to you but they will try to bring you down so i don't have any more those second category people in my life be it my colleague be it my friend i'm very fortunate that i have wonderful people and ram you are also one of the best example like if you know if i look at if i look at all all that family which i created after canada in terms of because before i knew nobody but now with god's grace i i think i i can proudly say that i i have a big huge family from east to west coast in within canada well thank you for thank you for sharing that and thank you for sharing that email story with us because you know um, i can just imagine how difficult it was at that time you know especially being new and not knowing how how you know how to respond and so on but it's just a phase and you sharing that story um here tonight and let's just chat with around that i can assure you that you are changing lives without knowing it because um i can assure you you know people are watching and people um probably have have um you know um, encountered similar um you know um situations and so on and not knowing you not know themselves how to handle it but the fact that you mentioned very clearly that um you know there are people who will support you and allow you to grow and there's some people who will just bring you down no matter what you do kind of thing so <laughs> and i mean and, and i think you know people get mature in life as well too when you get to a certain age and when you get to a certain um um when you're um you know when when you're comfortable in life or when you are confident you to mention about confidence you volunteering you yes. kind of, um, you gain out of confidence those things doesn't really bother you because you are you are so confident you know in yourself and know your you know know your capability and potential and so on but i'm glad you took the time to kind of share that i'm very nice thank you done. thank you so um my dear fellow listeners for the, for those of you who have just tuned in you are listening to let's chit chat with narain that keep in mind there are a few different ways to listen to us You can listen to us on a regular radio. That's one of two point seven CKMS FM. You can listen to us on TV as well. For those of you who have the Rogers Digital Box on channel nine part six, and of course, we are live stream or chat chat. So do take the opportunity to share our page. Our guest tonight is uh, uh, Sukjit Singh, a very talented, very community minded oriented person, and that's one of the reasons him and I get along so well because we understand the importance of giving back we understand the importance of you know helping a fellow human being um and the fact that you highlight um um subject that you are freely offering i thought i was the only one doing that but i guess not <laughs> i'm so glad you said that's very nice of you not too many people do that and you know um i am i i know you do you know what and it's it's important that you do because you have knowledge and all you're doing you're sharing your knowledge you're sharing your experiences because um people people are benefiting from it and you know people are benefiting from him so you wouldn't want to stop so usually uh, we we take a quick look and we can acknowledge a few people um during the show here and so we'll kind of uh, sure. uh do, do that right now and so obviously um people are making you know um some comments and so on we appreciate all of that I want to give a special hello to say hello to Gurley Prasad. Thank you so much for taking a sneak peek. Very much appreciated. Gurley will be joining us this coming Saturday, so we look forward to have her on here. Uh, Christine um, is making some um, comments here. We appreciate your comments here, Christine. Christine is saying that you know we have to learn to adapt, which I'm sure you will you you will agree. You kind of share some of that. I want to say hello to um, Ryan Adams watching and listening all the way from Guyana. Oh, wow. Uh, we are um, you know and all of you let me just quickly um you know lake ram um savitri we have had um her daughter perform um an item here as well she's from toronto um sandra uh sunil patel you probably know sunil he's a he's a great singer and i would love to have him in the show here but he's a little bit busy but at, at some point um aj um thanks thank you guys for watching i'm hoping you guys are learning because uh, um our guest tonight is sharing some really good information because you know the information you share so far you, you people have to go to college to learn all these tricks and tips man i can tell you that for sure <laughs> you have to pay hundreds of dollars to 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 learn like, a little bit of a thing there you know and things like that and the fact that you're sharing it uh, freely here is pretty cool um satish thank you so much radha um javed 
you know, all of you. Um, and Daniel, I'm pretty much sure Daniel is paying keen attention here, which is awesome. Daniel is, is always open to learn and things like that kind. Really, really nice. Lalita, I mean, all of you, we definitely appreciate you taking time to tune in here. It's always nice to have you guys on board for sure. <clears throat> so we, we talk about, um, we talk about obviously challenges. We talk about you and so on. But I mean, you have achieved so much you know, um, um, you know, and so let's talk about some successes now kind of thing. Like talk about success. Um, sure. We are going to get to your top 25, um, you know, um, awarding, which is sort of a beautiful thing because, you know, Canada here, we have millions of people living here in Canada and every year they only select 25 people. And the fact that you were selected to be one of those unique 25 people, I think is a beautiful thing. I have the magazine here, by the way, um, I'm, um, you have it back. So this is way back in 2013. 13. Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to try to put it there. So that's. Oh, thank you. Yeah, wow. So, so that's <laughs> that, so the top 25. And we have some really, um, you know, that um, I can't remember his name off my head, but that one guy with the glasses, uh, the, 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 the judge. Judge, he, yes. Yeah. He, is, uh, he was born and raised in Jamaica. And um, yep. that's. Uh, people may not recognize me because I probably had a little bit more hair then, but that's, yes, yeah, yes. that's but that's me there as well too. And Steve Nash as well. Steve oh, Nash is there. Oh yes, and look, Steve. Nah, exactly. Right, right. So yeah. this group, I think this group, the top twenty-five, not because I'm in it, and not because you're in it, and you're my guest, but it to me, this twenty-five group. I think that was a well-selected group for sure. It was an honor for me to be among that group, and I'm sure it's no different for for you. So what was it like? to be chosen as one of the most successful um, immigrants here in Canada because it's extremely difficult to be. Chris, Christine, who's watching right now, brought up a good point. A lot of people come to this country too, but they're not doing so well, right? We, we, we know that. And it could be big for a variety of different, different reason, reasons, not understanding the resources, or maybe have pride as well too, because you know, uh, people, as you mentioned, people have good jobs back home yeah. and, things, and maybe afraid to ask a neighbor or something because they go, they're probably saying about, oh, that, I'm not supposed to do that kind of thing, right? But learning and, and, and knowledge is, is, is a powerful thing. It's never a bad thing. So what will be one of your greatest achievements or a few of your achievements that you can share with us? Okay. You know what? Before I say this, because you know what? You have said it so beautiful. All these awards, all these recognitions. Uh, so what I say, and I will, I clearly remember that when uh, this award ceremony was happening and I was actually going to the vault where other reporters and media were there, mm -hmm. you know, there was, uh, there was this guy from, uh, I forgot the name of the newspaper, but a very well-known uh, person from the ethnic media. And he was just recording and he said, Sujit, what does it mean to you? Like you are now one of the top 25 immigrants. What does it mean to you? Mm -hmm. You know, my eyes got a little wet that excitement you also know and especially this prestigious award i said one word and i said responsibility now i have to live with this for the rest of my life that canada canadian chose me as one of the top 25 immigrants mm -hmm. and standing next to steve nash and, and and individuals like yourself and multiple others and now if you look at uh, when they were celebrating 10 years of these awards, when I look at the names and I said, you know what, how fortunate you are. I'm not using the word luck, first of all. <laughs> no, it wasn't and, luck. That was and luck. I tell you the story of <laughs> luck also. Believe it or not, there was no award, nothing. It was 2010, year 2010. I just got my job. And after a few months, there was a conference. And it was up in the north in Natawasaga. And we all, there were more than 200 to 300 people there for the conference from, from the same sector. And you know what? There were introductions and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know what? This trivia game where they say, who is how much old in Canada and all. And I, when they were saying, you know, two years, three years. And you know what? They did stop after one year. Like one and a half year like that. But then I raised my hand like I am less than a year in Canada. And you know what? Every head was towards me like, you are here in Canada for less than a year. How come you got, got the job so fast and this and that? That was like a murmur behind, right? Mm -hmm. But then I was so 
fortunate because as i said you know what there are two types of people mm-hmm. so there was somebody in the crowd and especially at lunch time <clears throat> he came up to me and he gave something to me and the letter was l u c k and to that group he explained this chap is not lucky and this was the same guy with whom i met for the first time and i shared my story i shared everything that what i have done in canada and he explained it later on l stands for learning u stand for under c competent and k is for knowledge he gave it to me but he did explain to the rest of those individual that luck is an, is a kind of a word which we sometimes misuse it so and then i remember from that day onward it is not luck it is your hard work it is your authentic work it is Absolutely. your and again it's not my work honestly and i am i want to quote this uh, and i forgot the name of the person who said but it always stays with me it says if you help enough people to get what they want you get what you want and honestly did i want those awards maybe yes and no but i tell you one thing what i wanted was identity what i wanted was to make and leave a mark and it goes like it is a written also somewhere in a magazine when i had no job i was volunteering and it was asking me my profile was publishing i'm referring to a magazine where my profile was published when i was seeking when i was seeking a job when i was looking for a job and that question was what is your canadian dream and my canadian dream was to become a role model and success story for fellow immigrants mm-hmm. had no idea that that magazine was published in 2010 and 2013 i was on the cover page of the same magazine so is it me yes in terms of body yes but what is behind that it is that fire to help others it is fire to actually make my own identity mm-hmm. right so all this and you know what as i said again these awards rbc 25 100% but these awards comes with a lot of responsibility and i tell you one thing that responsibility definitely you get more visibility you get more exposure right but that responsibility you have to live with that responsibility and i feel canada bestowed me that uh, in 2013 and i am very fortunate that i i keep my my mission which is to connect right people to connect make right connections and help each other so that we can all flourish in this beautiful country which we now call home uh, but yes every time and you see you show, showed your magazine if you if your viewers can see on top of that is is my my cover page of that magazine let me bring you to what sir go ahead so so i just wanted to tell you that how how it mean how much it means to me to be on the cover page of that magazine and then once that pandora box, box opened of awards till date i'm very fortunate i can tell you like you know what uh, it started in 2013 and then in a, in the same year i got newcomer gem volunteer award in 2014 by the peel leadership center i was chosen as a most collaborative collaborative leader and in 2016 uh, i was honored that uh, career professionals of canada um, uh, gave me outstanding community outreach strategist award and the biggest till date this still give me sometime goosebumps i also got uh, Can- canada highest uh, award for from the governor general of canada it is sovereign medal for volunteers mm-hmm. uh, for year 2018 uh, which was given to me in 2019 so in terms of all these awards every single award comes with a responsibility i'm very fortunate that my work is been recognized my my dedication my hard work has been recognized and it is very important that your work has been recognized that is kind of a fuel to your engine which keeps you going and it's very important correct and i'm glad you said that because sometimes people don't get it um you know i i mentioned on this show before that the feelings 
of my, I'm just speaking for myself and I, I, I'm glad you said it as well. Um, you know, the feelings you get when you are being honored, you know, in whatever way that may be, whether that be, you know, um, you know, an award or, or a ceremony and whatever the case may be, it is, it never fades away for me. And I think you can, you can relate to that. The feelings is always the same and it kind of gives you that extra fire or it continues to fluid you to kind of keep going because you have a purpose, you have, you know, a role to play, you have a responsibility and so on. So I'm glad that you are seeing it that way as well too. But you have lots of fire in there. So I don't think that Thank fire you. is going to go out anytime soon. That's Thank for you. sure. Thank but you. I, what I would like to do, this is a very short clip. I would like to um, highlight this so that people can see. Um, and this is regarding the Top 25 uh, Immigrant Award. So if that's oh, okay with you, let me kind of uh, get this ball rolling here so people can see um, for us hand because this is very prestigious. So I will um, give the opportunity to people to take a look at it. I'm just trying to set up things here. Okay, so what I'll do, yeah, so it's, it's, it's right there. So it's only a couple of seconds. Well, after a few months, I got the RBC Top 25 Canadian Immigrant Award. I felt uh, on the top of the world. I felt that my efforts were recognized by the citizens of Canada because it is a People's Choice Award. Uh, I came in 2009 and uh, within the first three months I got my first volunteer opportunity. I became very passionate about giving back to the community. Awesome, awesome. Yes, I just thought Thank I could. you for sharing with your viewers. And uh, Noran, through you, I definitely would love to um, uh, convey my thanks to those who are watching your show. Um, and and I'm, I'm really honored to be here with you, with all of your viewers also. Thank you once again to all of those who are watching your show right now. Oh, no, for sure. Um, you know, we are happy to have you on here because keep in mind, a person like you, you know, I'm not trying to compare anybody here, but we are all unique and different in our own way. We, we know that. We learn that in psychology courses and so on, but and in social work and things like that. But the bottom line is some of us have more energy than some, right? And what, I, what you mentioned earlier, you know, um, certain things is not luck. If you put energy and if you put passion in, into anything, you are going to see results, you know? Um, so because you, you are um, so passionate about helping people, that's one of the reasons, you know, people, you know, um, you can see things are happening for people, you know, whether that be them finding a job, whether that be them feel more settled in into their new community and so on. And those awards, you know, are, 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 are ways to prove that you, you know, you are, you know, um, you, you are edge above a lot of people, which is not a bad thing, you know, because we all have potential and we, it's up to us to kind of use you know, our potential and our resources and so on to kind of be the best version of ourselves. And I can tell you, you are using every piece of yourself to really maximize things. I'm very proud of you and very happy that you are doing that because Thank we you. need, we definitely need people like you. So the thing is, every community needs people like you because you need active people. You need people who will be willing to share ideas. You need people who will be willing to respond to emails even when it's after hours and not even worrying about you know i'm not getting paid for it and so on right these are things that we do i get what you're saying these are things we do without even thinking about it um but that's it's who you are it is um it, it those you um you're doing it um because it's 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 part of you it's part of you being a human being it's part of you being a proud canadian as well too so good for you on that okay. um we are approaching eight o'clock, but we usually go over a little bit more because I do have one or two more questions for you. We'll sure, take the full sure. um, advantage of, of that for sure. I know we talk about this off the air. As you know, I'm a politician. Um, you know, once we, I think one of the reasons why I get into politics in the first place is because as a community leader, you know, I recognize the needs in the community and I want, you know, basically I will want to see better things happen, you know, um, in our community to make it more vibrant and all of that. And so, that's one of the reasons I get into it. No other reason kind of thing, right? If I was to look like look at a person like you with your passion, your energy, understanding the needs in the community, I think that a person like you who has been there to do the groundwork, 
has a better understanding when it comes to the needs of the people, right? You can bring Jack from back and, 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 and give, a good, to give a good speech, but if they don't understand the needs of the people, it wouldn't work that way. It might be a good way to put up a good show. You will be a good politician, in my opinion. We don't have to be politicians, though. I'm aware of that, to do good things for the community, to achieve results, and to really make an impact. Will you ever consider um, being a politician? Because as you know, here in Canada, um, you know, um, everybody, anybody, um, you know, can have that opportunity. Like I have tried and things of that kind. Will you consider running for politics or would you just do what you do best uh, without getting into politics? Or will you participate in a different way? <laughs> I, will go, I, I will go with your second advice. And I now, again, not lighter side of my life, but I tell you one thing. Uh, if if right now I know my my family, my wife and my my in-laws in Australia, my extended family in UK, and and my my parents in India, they are watching this show. And and uh, I have to before I give answer to this question quickly, I have to tell you one thing. Sure. My family, my my grandfather, his brothers, everybody was so politically involved. I can't even tell you. I grew up with stories of India independence and the contribution my grandparents uh, did in, in that fight. And till date, my father is very actively involved in politics in India. So I know what politics is, but here comes your question. Mm -hmm. Now I have to tell you one thing. My best companion in Canada is my life partner. And there is one thing she told me, if you ever think about it, I would be the first person to leave you. <laughs> so oh, I won't oh. <laughs> So I, I guess I know the answer to that question. <laughs> but with all due respect to politicians, I have very good friends who are in politics. I have very good individuals who try to run every time. Sometimes they win, sometimes they lose. I can tell you, uh, I got a better understanding of politics in Canada both provincially, not both, like three, three levels of government, That's municipally, right, yeah. provincially, and federally. But I tell you one thing, I feel that every individual got their role to do. Mm -hmm. And ah, I'm happy with my role mm -hmm. uh, because I do feel that I'm fit for this role. Mm -hmm. I may not be fit for politics. Mm -hmm. And I, I definitely will say this with with, with confidence that there are wonderful people who are in politics. Mm -hmm. But for me, uh, okay, I also have to admit one thing. Mm -hmm. They say never say no. Never say it's, never, that's right. Never <laughs> say never, never say never. So I don't want to lie, but I tell you one thing, I don't have any intention to go into politics. Mm -hmm. But I do have intention to support those who do good work and which I've been doing it and which I will continue to do that. No, and that's a fair answer. I think um, that's why I, I just thought I ask. Um, you, you are right. You know, um, if you feel that you are a good fit for the role you, um, you know, you play right now, I think that's great because only you can tell what yeah. you're feeling inside. But the way I'm seeing it from outside as well, too, I have to tell you, you are good in what you do. There's no question about that. I've been told those things uh, many times too. People say to me, Narayan, why would you want to get into politics, you know? <laughs> but, but, uh, but I think I already answered that question. So that's totally fair. So thank you for sharing that. Thank but, you, you know, for asking um, me. This was a tough, tough question, honestly. You know, um, you know um, and again, you know, um, I'm glad you, you, you kind of took it, um, you know, and you answered it and you didn't block it up. Um, and that's totally fair. You, you don't have to be, I mean, you are a perfect example to show that you do not have to be in politics to make positive change, you know, in the community. You are doing it, um, you know, um, so nicely, um, you know, you. Uh, and, you know, and so you don't have to wait. And the, the good thing about not being in politics too, you know, uh, or, or when you're running some independent um, project and so on, is that you can do things faster and quicker because you don't need approval too for certain things. And it has to be done a certain way as well too. If you're helping people, you're helping it, helping th those people willingly you're helping them because you have that knowledge and so on so you don't have to wait and approve of you know and somebody to say well you know i want to do this you know should i make that approach and whatnot so i think um you know what you said there is it's not a bad thing so what advice do you have though specifically you may have mentioned it in between as you were responding because you nicely took your time to respond mm -hmm. but very specifically though mm -hmm. but you know in canada here uh, we have people i know the COVID thing slow it down a little bit but 
you know in Canada, um, Canada has a strength yeah. from immigrants all over the world. Yeah. So pe people are coming to Canada, not only from Guyana, not only from India. I know we have a large Indian community here, even in the region of Guadalupe, large here too, but all over the place. Sometimes people do their research, of course, before they come. A lot of people do that. But sometimes, for some reason, the research looks a little bit different when they're yes. researching from outside. Yes. Because yes. there's only so much you can find online. And it's not because a lot of people, when they're posting or when they're doing something or on their website or on their organization site, everything looks extremely shiny as well, too. So you don't get to see the other pieces when you're meeting and greeting and so on. What advice do you have, you know, for future immigrants coming into this beautiful country. Yeah. You know, so that way, if they're listening right now, we hope they are, we hope people take the privilege to share this page because mm -hmm. this will be key what you're saying now. Mm -hmm. What advice do you actually have for them so that their transition can be one of, you know, um, one of, uh, uh, you know, one of beauty, one of, um, you know, an easiness, so to speak, one where um, they can speak proud, proudly the way you spoke earlier to say that, you know, they were welcome, you know, um, with warmth and all of that. But also, you were able to find job quicker than yep. other people thought. You know, things like that. You were able to kind of achieve things quicker and so on. Whatever you see here will be a very powerful statement. So, what advice do you have for new immigrants coming? I, in? I wish I can make my statement very long, which I won't be doing it. I tell you one thing: definitely, ground reality when you actually land would be completely different than whatever you see online. Mm -hmm. So I will say, prepare well, so that you know, this is how your life will look like. But when you come, you need to prepare yourself financially, because if you are actually landing in Canada, as a skilled immigrant, you're supposed to have some money in your bank account. So you know that you can survive. Number one. Number two, make sure you enroll yourself in any program which is a job related program so that you know the nitty gritty of how to look for a job do not just go blindly and start applying for jobs because then you are the more negativity and the more uh, less response from the other party will add on to your anxiety right so preparedness is the key and that is what advice I will give it to you, but uh, or to your listeners actually. But honestly, to tell you the thing, mm -hmm. every single individual is different. How they deal with this pressure is different. But there are few things which you can always do, and this is the best analogy which somebody gave it to me because I have my my IT background, and they say when your operating system is running low or you need a new operating system, what you will do. Or if your system gets hang up, what you will do? You restart. So can, coming to Canada is restart or installing a new operating system. On your, uh, it is overwriting your old operating system, but with the choice that anytime you want to go back, you can check. Go back means you have something like you, something like a thermostat in your body. You will adjust your temperature. But yes, make sure that you understand. I call it cultural nuances mm -hmm. and i give one example i did not drink tim horton for six to seven months <laughs> because i never knew that tim horton was so important right <laughs> but it was a cultural thing of course and the moment i started holding tim horton i felt more canadian see there are very small and in my case in my case naran i have to share this with you yes please do Maybe people from from guyana or from all those countries Remember, I'm coming from India. I'm a Sikh by, by religion. I mm -hmm. wear turban. This is my mm -hmm. crown. Mm -hmm. When I was told, and this was a very good advice, which was given to me by a non-Sikh, mm -hmm. somebody who did not uh, belong to my community, did not belong to my country, did not mm -hmm. speak my language, did not eat the food. Mm -hmm. She told me the safe colors to wear at the time of the interview. And I was really like, because I love colors. You know, if you look at my pictures, oh, yeah. I have not millions, but many colors. I right? know. I love my colors too, man. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, but then somebody told me, somebody took pain in explaining why colors are important. Why dressing is important in the way 
which Canadians, like when, now when I say Canadian means which you won't be seen as a different person, like if you are wearing a bright color. Because I, I do know that I have some bright colors which were not appropriate for the interview, right? Mm -hmm. So many things, but if I have to say, and lastly, I want to say, take advice from known, unknown, whoever comes to your life. Mm -hmm. But all that advice may not work for you. What will work for you, you only know the best. But pre preparation is the key. And that key definitely will make you succeed, settle and integrate faster. And definitely, I say this, maybe you won't be in position to volunteer right away, but as soon as you know that you can give some time to the community, please start volunteering. Through that, I know how much I have learned and how much it contributed to my success. This is uh, what I wanted to share. Thank you, Narayan. No, no, thank you for sharing that because you know it will be very helpful because I mean, I've known, I know so many people who get stuck and the fact that you are sharing this here will be very helpful. So maybe now that I mean we do what we do what we do, but maybe by you sharing this, it will save people from sending them an email to you or to me or to somebody else because people will be sharing this. So they are going to have conversation. I'm hoping that you know what I've I've seen. You know, um, Sukjit on the let's chat with Narayan that you and he mentioned about that. You brought up a very good point, which I have to agree with you. Of course, you um, you know you are going to give pointers to people based on what works for you and so on, yeah. and vice versa. But those pieces might not work for everybody, which is fine. But it's important for people to be open, as, as you mentioned, you know, to to listen to people, to hear what they what to you know listen to what they're saying, and then maybe try to apply um, those pieces to to really make it work for you. But uh, if I was to summarize what you say there, there are opportunities here, but. You really have to dig and seek before you find yeah. them. It, it wouldn't be just laying there for you and you just go and you pick it up and say, okay, this is awesome. I got it here. Now I'm going to take it home. You may have to dig a little bit deeper. You know, you may have to apply, you know, um, you know, apply to several jobs and so on. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And you know, the, this whole job thing here too. And um, one of the things we should talk about a job thing too. You mentioned about a resume earlier. I have to reflect back on, on the resume because this all comes back to tips, you know, in terms of finding job. The resume thing, one thing I can tell you, especially for, if, I'm not sure if it's an Indian thing, um, they, they have long, long resumes, yeah? seven to eight pages. I've seen it yeah. all the time. And one starter, for those of you who are watching, and, um, and Sukhjit can jump in anytime here, the standard here in Canada is usually um, two pages plus a cover letter. That seems to be standard kind of thing. Depending if it's a, if, if it's a more of a high-tech job, some people may accept another page or so, but generally speaking, two pages, technically less is more. Because when you go for an interview, you will have the opportunity to say whatever you need to say. So it's not an issue. The, the resume pretty much gives you the opportunity for an interview kind of thing. Right? I yeah. mean, yeah, the, the, the resume. Yeah. So, yeah, so thank you for sharing that. Is there um, any other pieces you would like to say that I didn't get to ask you? I know you... Just one last thing, Narayan. Oh, yes, you go right ahead. You go right ahead. You know, no matter what we talk about people mm -hmm. in your life, but I tell mm -hmm. you one thing, in this land of opportunity, mm -hmm. you do have wonderful people. Mm -hmm. So be a newcomer or you're not newcomer. Have at least five to six. This is another successful tip which which, uh, which somebody very prominent gave it to, to, like it is written there, but gave it to me in person. Have mm -hmm. at least five positive people in your life. Mm -hmm. And those five positive people, allow them to be very truthful to you, very genuine and very direct to you. They will uplift your life because we all have blind spots. I'm so blessed that I, I have those more than five people in my life uh, as a mentor, advisor, or some of, some of friends. I am blessed that I can ask them what I'm doing wrong. And I have given my permission to them that please, if I deviate from my path, the path I have shared with you, please correct. Please correct me. If, if you see any action from my end, which goes not in the direction I was supposed to go, please do that. And that is very uplifting. You know what? Uh, and of course, your viewers can see, uh, I take help from, my, uh, from the books also. So there is a lot said in terms of uh, your job search, in terms of life in general, right? What, what worked for me may not work for you. But maybe one thing which I said or which Narayan said will work for you. 
and you then you can build whole empire on that and this is where i build my empire and thank you once again for listening to my story so awesome we are not done yet i need to you to share a few things you're grateful for but before we do that i like the fact that you do the top um, you you talk about having five people um you know for mentorship and so on one of the things we normally promote on our show here is the top five we call it that top five so we encourage people to reach out to five people who know more than them so they can rely and reach out to those people yes. Yes. because i'm sure you'll agree with me and i think that's one of the reasons why you share it you nail it there because if you don't surround yourself with people and i mentioned many times but it, i'm so glad you said it and it's worth highlighting again if people don't surround themselves with people who know more than them then pretty much you will always remain at that one level you'll, you'll stay stuck but if you reach out to, if you reach out to people who you can you know um you can count on then life will be so much more easy and i'm glad you said that we all have blind spots and we need to kind of have have some guidance it doesn't matter what stage and level we get into life so you yeah. really you really nail it but just before we close off what would be some of the things that you are very much grateful for in your life this fact the fact that the fact that all of us go through challenges in life i know i know but this is a great question thank you very much uh i will tell you one thing i am grateful for many things first of all my dna i'm grateful for having lovely family my my family my my both side my wife side uh, my extended family great friends and i'm also grateful for all the mistakes i have done and learning from those mistakes and promising myself that i will never do those mistakes i'm grateful to the country where i was born i'm grateful to the country which gave me my first chance to work outside india which was oman i'm also grateful and i'm now talking about canada Mm-hmm. I'm grateful about this wonderful country which accepted me as an immigrant and allowed me to flourish and I am also grateful to all those wonderful people I can't I can't be uh, leaving this discussion without even mentioning that I was helped by many mm-hmm. and all those people are still in my life and I can't thank them enough for being It being a support always whenever i needed their support i was present i am still present and they are always present and above all naran and your name is so beautiful it is <laughs> god right i always believe that there is something which we call god who lives or she or he i don't know the gender mm-hmm. but this is i always say almighty god who makes us to do what we are supposed to do but definitely i am very fortunate i'm thankful again to my family and big circle of friends i always count their support if i am free if i am freely doing whatever i am doing i could not have done without their support without their encouragement and i really mean it i really mean it so thank you naran i just have to say this overall i'm grateful for this wonderful life this country and the country i was born country where i have worked just to wrap it up thank you narayan thank you awesome. so much awesome 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 and so just before we go though um christine one of our viewers is asking a question here so usually we randomly yes. ask question so yeah. you you probably are already doing this but let's hear it from you because we all do it we don't necessarily uh, make it known so christine is asking would you go back to punjab to help your oh. mother country or okay. to um or to retire there uh in terms of help i don't need to go back and help i'm helping it from here number one mm-hmm. number two my family is there my my parents are there my sisters are there i travel frequently my parents do travel frequently here to canada mm-hmm. but i always say you said christine asked this question wonderful yeah, question yeah yeah, yeah good this question this is the yeah. dilemma which i don't know when i have more gray hair <laughs> when my life will change but i tell you one thing I chose Canada because I wanted to live here. I chose Canada because I I decided to leave that motherland and and be son of this motherland so that I can have wonderful life. But always I always say the one thing never forget from from where you come from. Because in in Hindi or in Punjabi we say it janam bhumi where you were born. I am always attached to my janam bhumi. But you have a role here which is your karam bhumi. you migrated so so my my honesty my dedication goes to both these wonderful countries and definitely 
I always contribute to both these countries, be it my volunteer or be it another kind of help in India. So mm -hmm. good question, but I, I can't say that because I don't know. Mm -hmm. I never plan. Like, you know what people ask, you know, what is your future plan? I plan my day and max I do plan a little bit beyond that. But I always say thank to God the day when it started, the day when it is over. Because next day morning, you don't know. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Christine. This is a wonderful question. Because, uh, okay, on again, on lighter side of life, my mom, my mother, my mother, uh, with her, I always have this kind of uh, open discussion, right? Mm -hmm. And you, know, you, you I, I miss my parents a lot. I, I miss my family. I miss my friends, right? But it's now been 22 years I have left my home country. It was my choice to come uh, to Canada or to go somewhere else, right? Uh, but again, I can't answer because I don't know. But that is not the plan at this moment. All right. So thank you for taking time to answer. It was such of a pleasure, obviously, to have you here. Such of a rich conversation. You know, I'm so glad that we 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 reached out to you because we knew that um you know you were going to share some important pieces that you know that's actually needed. You know, it's um, um these pieces that you share. These are information that a lot of people need to hear. And I think um, you've done it well. Um, that's how we actually plan our show in the first place, right? Because you know, I'm sure you're receiving emails constantly, whether that be through our messages, whether that be through LinkedIn or, or Facebook or personal email. People always need help yeah. and support yeah. and so on. Because as you know, here in the region of Waterloo, we have like the two universities, we have colleges and so on. So lots of of um, immigrants living here, a lot of students and so on. So it's not uncommon for people to kind of reach out. Yeah. And so the purpose of this show, obviously we do bring in a um, lot of um, artists and things of that kind to showcase them and so on. That's what we do because I love the arts and so on. But one of the things uh, we do is that we try to address the need, you know? So we look at the need and we kind of figure out, you know, um, you know, uh, what will be best, you know, um, topic or, 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 or who will be like a good person to have on the show. And so when we realize that, um, you know, there's a need to share the information you, you share here tonight, you were the first person who came to mind because I, I can see that you have it with pride. I mean, I, I kept mine for so many years as well, too. When I look at the magazine, how can I not think of somebody like you there. Thank you. Thank um, you. You have so much to share. Um, I hope everybody else, I, hope I have to touch base with some of those guys. I hope they're all doing well. I know everybody's busy their own life. But so that's one of the reasons we reach out to you. And we are so glad we, we did that. So what I what would like you to do, just hang, hang in there. Don't go anywhere. We'll chit chat for another minute or so. Sometimes people get confused and they kind of sign up. So sure. my dear fellow sure. listeners, as we are approaching the end of tonight's program, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for tuning in to Let's Chit Chat with Narayan Dad. Please remember to tune in to us again tomorrow at 7 o'clock Eastern time, that is, for another special episode of Let's Chit Chat with Narayan Dad. On behalf of myself and our guests, a loving, um, community-minded person who you can reach out to anytime um, that, you know, he does what he does best on behalf of him and myself, um, Sukhjit Singh, we'd like to join together and wish you a great today and even more better tomorrow. So again, please join us tomorrow, 7 o'clock Eastern time, because we'd love to have you um, join us again. So again, good night. Have a great today, and even a better tomorrow.